There is a place, not here or there, but somewhere in between. There is a space in the thin air that really can be seen. If you listen and observe, you may be surprised. Some may call it Camelot, or even Paradise. Some may say you cross a bridge, others through a door. But all I know about this place is that I call it Evermore. Evermore. Hello, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell, and I'm the host and founder of Evermore Paranormal. Today, we are in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, on a paranormal road trip. In particular, I am at the Farnsworth House in Paracon, interviewing participants. So let's get started. Please welcome Lita Hawk to the show. Hi, Lita. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. So what brings you to Farnsworth Paracon? Well, I uh, wrote a paranormal mystery series, and I'm you know, selling books here. Uh, the series follows Kyrie here. Carter. As she kind of discovers her ability. She discovers that she's an empath, and she's able to communicate with spirits. So in the first book, The Newbie, she wins a Halloween-themed radio contest, and she gets the chance to do a paranormal investigation with celebrity ghost hunters, uh, Gabe and Drac Petrie. And this, she's just over the moon because she's in love with, with Gabe. Mm -hmm. And she interviewed, or she, I'm sorry, she investigates a house that's close to the place she grew up in, and she's seen this house all her life but never got the chance to go in. So she goes in with the team, and they're investigating, and the spirit takes an instant dislike to her. So she gets in over her head, and you know, they discover a, a decades-old murder happened there. So she kind of figures out who the murderer was and what happened, and this spirit is trying to silence her. Ah. So she discovers that paranormal investigating isn't all fun and games. Mm. And then you got me intrigued. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested. And then the series continues, and School Spirits, she returns to her alma mater where she went to college, and she investigates with the college paranormal team. And again, they discover there's some mystery behind one of the hauntings that everybody's trying to sweep under the carpet. So they go through and try to find out who this spirit is and why she's in this place. Hmm. And that leads into the third book, Witch of Willow Lake. She discovers that there's a spirit of a witch that is tied to the campus ghost. So it gets really dangerous in book three. And uh, she gets into some near possession and just... Wow, you got me intrigued there. <laughs> I'm really interested. So are you... When, book three just came out. Do you have a book four already in the works? Uh, yeah, book three came out uh, almost a year ago, and I'm feverishly working on book four. But uh, book four, I'm actually working on a historical person within the story, so I'm having to do a lot more research, and it's it's more involved than the first three books were. Wow, I'm curious who the model is or who who that is. Is that a relative or somebody? Yeah, it's, it's just uh, one of those general stock photos that my cover designer found. Wow. I, I had a very distinct vision of what she looked like, and she mm -hmm. was able to use my descriptions to find somebody that looks a lot like the character. That's amazing. So where can, where do you have a website? Yes, uh, I have a Facebook page. Uh, okay. Lita Hawk author. Lita Hawk author. So this is, and are you, this is, you have one book series, and you're just going to continue. Yes. Um, with book, this character for yeah, I'm thinking book four may be the last for this series. 
but along down the line, I'd like her and her boyfriend to get married, mm -hmm. and then they'll have children, and at some point, I want to do a young adult series with her teenage children. Oh, that's amazing. I really like the topic, and how did you pick uh, Paranormal for this? Um, I've been having experiences with spirits since I was four. Okay. Uh, I saw my first ghost when I was four in my bedroom, and she just kind of appeared at the foot of my bed one night, mm -hmm. and I just st sat there and looked at her, and, who are you? Mm -hmm. And that quick she disappeared, mm -hmm. and it stuck with me for 40 some years, Right. you know, and I, I just keep wondering, who was the spirit? Mm -hmm. And she actually found her way into my books. She's, oh. in, she's in book one, and she makes another appearance in book four. Wow. I love the idea. And so, well, thank you for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. On the same family, but it gives you a more... Please welcome Kate Gamage to the show. Hi, Kate. Hello. Great running into you again. Yep. Thank you for coming over and talking about your book. And uh, why you're here to talk about your book. Why else are you here? I'm here to do psychic readings and sell a few metaphysical things at my table. Okay. So did you do any readings today? Was nope. No readings? Well, there are some other psychics, so you had some competition, I guess. Um, so tell us about your book. I think it's very interesting. My book I actually wrote before I did my past life regression and what I've written in the book came out in the past life regression. What's the name of the book by the way? Um, my Reincarnation Story as Meryl Monroe by Kate Gamage. So tell me how that came about. Um, I knew for a long time that I needed to write a book but there were some times that I was hesitant because yes you are psychic and you and you do have feelings like should I bring this out or should not because you are telling the, the truth about some things in here. And eventually I said, I listened to my guys and I finally says, I need, to, I need to have this book written. And so I've written it, but I hadn't published it yet. And then I had my past life regression done and what came out during the past life regressions in the book. Mm -hmm. And then I realized right then and there that I was telling the truth, even though I knew for years that I was her. Mm -hmm. So I know you have a book and about... <clears throat> Your past life is Marilyn Monroe, but you've had other past lives. You want to mention I have your other another past lives? book on my past life with Stonewall Jackson's first wife, Eleanor Junkin Jackson, which people doesn't know didn't know that he actually had two past li mm -hmm. two wives. They think he just has his second. His wife is famous for being the widow of the Confederacy. This wife died in childbirth, mm. and that's why for a long time he actually had issues with. Like, he loved children, but he had issues with having them because he didn't know if they were going to die. Oh, wow. But, yeah, but he actually died before his before he actually ever got to see his child and become, become mm -hmm. a little kid. Now, I've been asking everybody at the con, uh, anybody that I've interviewed today, have you ever stayed at Farnsworth House Inn? Yes, I have, twice. And did you have experience any paranormal activity? I've had a lot of paranormal activity in that house. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I had the incident where the, one of the ghosts actually ported an item from one of the rooms. That's where they transfer an item spiritually. And I, w and I remember being do doing investigations of the ghost of interest crew. Yeah, I would make notes before I ever got in the room after I went to bed to what was in there and I knew the next morning I wake up and there's a shoe like where they make shoes it was like a shoe mount on the floor and it was not there the night before wow that's heavy and I actually had locked the door which had the locks on it because mm -hmm. if you can't lock if you don't lock the door all those locks yeah the ghosts are going to open the door and you're going to wake up the next morning with a door open oh yeah <laughs> and people see you sleeping in the in the house wow um and then in that same room I did have, um, I did take in a mel meter and the wooden chair was actively going. Mm -hmm. And I, at first I thought there's an electric, electric line. So yeah, I'm looking for the electric line. And it was, um, and then I was like, there's no electric line. So I was like, well, yeah. And I was like, that chair was a hot bed. So, so I knew something was sitting in that mm -hmm. chair. And then that's the bed where you actually have, they should give you a stool because it's high up to get into that room. It's the McFarland room. And that same night, I'm taking a shower, and I get shoved coming out of the tub. Mm, okay. And I'm like, 
okay, something's not so nice here. <laughs> and then when I was staying in the Catherine Sweeney room, which was my second stay, I actually had the shower and sink turn on by themselves. Wow. And I had the original ovulus that you had to do a flip switch, and you could actually hear on the thing say creepy. Mm. which I thought it was Jeremy saying creepy. And then after that, I could hear the footsteps in the garret upstairs, mm -hmm. like, like like they were stomping down the staircase. So it's pretty active here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And my brother actually had an incident where when he went to the bathroom, he got locked in the bathroom by the ghost. Really? <laughs> I had that happen once in an antique and, mall. And he was in... He, and he's like freaking out at first, saying like, "Oh, I can't get out." I said, like, "Kyle, just eventually." I just told the ghost. I was like, "I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, let him out." And eventually, he got out of the bathroom. Yeah, that's wild. That is scary because, like I said, I had it happen at an antique mall, and I'm, I go in there and I can't get out, and I'm screaming and yelling. He was, at the, my husband was like at the end of the hall, still wasn't hearing me. Finally, when I gave, all of a sudden, the door just was miraculously open. That's how, that's how it was with my brother. Yeah. And we thought we, we thought it was because my other brother was mo was mocking Walter, the Confederate spirit in the house. Mm -hmm. And I said it was probably because of that. Like, Walter was getting back. Yep. But, um, and I told Kevin, I, I said, you do not mock him. Don't even keep saying his name. You're mocking him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to get angry. So, that's really interesting. I've been hearing a lot of cool stories, including the, my experiences as well. Obviously, you come to Farnsworth, it doesn't disappoint. I mean, there, there's paranormal activity here. I mean, I've even, sure. had, I've even had activity in the tavern while eating. Really? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard too many stories about in the tavern. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of activity in there. I actually spoke to one of the women that, um, she used to work at the tavern, and she will never work there again. Because, wow. she, because she had instances in a tavern. Wow. And she told us some of the instances. Where she actually had an incident where one of the, she, she had a bunch of bikers storm biker week sitting there. And all of a sudden the biker um, comes screaming, like like she comes back and she wonders why they're running out of the tavern. I mean, these are big biker twos. All the bikers running out like, of the tavern. <laughs> like, like, like really big That's ones. Funny. And all of a sudden she, the one guy comes back to pay the bill. And um, she was like, what happened? She, he, he he was like all the lanterns on the tables lit by themselves oh. and they were like yeah we're out of here <laughs> sounds right i would be too well thank you for coming and talking to us again kate gamage and we will be seeing a lot more of you since you're an affiliate for the for the show yeah. so thanks for joining us you're welcome please welcome don allison to the show Hey, thanks for for having me. This has been an interesting day for me here at the here at the Farnsworth House Paracon. I was uh, very glad to be invited to come. I've you know, been setting up, uh, having my books available. I just uh, just finished up with an hour long lecture, which was very interesting. Um, you know, people who have known me for most of my life will look at me when they hear I've done a paranormal book and say, "What?" And I say, hey, I know, I'm, I'm probably one of the least likely people you would ever expect to do a book on the paranormal. I'm a newspaper editor by trade, was daily uh, editor of the Daily Bryan Times newspaper for many years. I'm semi-retired now. Uh, my second career, so to speak, is, um, is publishing books, done a lot of books on Civil War history. And the, the latest book I've done is on the paranormal. I met a ghost at Gettysburg, a journalist's journey into the paranormal. And it really, I tried to make that, that title as descriptive as possible. I never intended to look for the paranormal. It came looking for me in a, a very real way. My wife and I had uh, have purchased an 1835 house in northwest ohio we have been working to restore it and as soon as we started work on the house we started having unexplained phenomena footsteps um, we've heard voices we've been touched um, electronics would just sort of go haywire radios would come on turn off we would have um, stations change we had a gentleman stop by who lived in the house for 20-some years before we bought it. And he saw us outside. He stopped by, stopped by and said, hey, do you guys know this house is haunted? 
And my first reaction is that explains the half empty booze bottles we've been finding oh. around. <laughs> but uh, as it turns out, um, some of the things he told us, we have experienced marbles rolling across the floor upstairs. That we were able to debunk. We found out when semis would jake break at a nearby curve, mm-hmm. it would vibrate the, the beams upstairs, and it sounded exactly like a marble rolling on cup floors. Wow. Okay. Other things we've not been able to debunk. He told us he'd hear footsteps that sounded like a child run from the north bedroom across the middle bedroom, across the hallway, into the uh, to the other bedroom, the door would slam shut. First time I heard that, I just shook my head, ran upstairs, nothing. No, There was dust on the floor. The upstairs had not been habitable for years. And to this day, we hear footsteps of a child in our bedroom at night. Wow. What really got me to write about the paranormal um, was a number of experiences I had at Gettysburg, mm-hmm. but one with my grandson was absolutely mind blowing. I brought him here for mm-hmm. the history, not for the the paranormal, but as part of I was registered as a journalist. We were given an opportunity for a ghost investigation. I thought it was a touristy gimmick mm-hmm. to entertain my grandson. We had the the equipment you see on TV. You see the the, the ghost. You know, investigators use a K2 meter. We had um, a spirit net and a spirit box, you know, to get the voices and the white noise you know, of the spirit box. And we ended up, after two hours, the investigation was done. We'd had almost nothing. Mm-hmm. Just before we got set to leave, when our investigator, Dustin, he asked, Is anyone with us? We got a seven, eight, nine. Intriguing. Uh, so, what year is it? 1863. Mm-hmm. Then it kind of died out. It was getting cold, so our two hours is up. She went to start the car to warm it up, and I just got to thinking: Is it really 1863? Okay, is this a soldier? So that what would soldiers be interested in? I said, Do you like jokes? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you like music? Of course, almost like there was an inflection of being insulted in the voice. My grandson, bless his soul, says, can you play for us? And we proceeded to get Civil War music, guitar period music, fading in and out. Later, a high, it sounded like a mandolin. After 10 minutes or so, the music faded. I said, wow, you're good. He said, thank you. I said, can you play some more? Yes, sir. We got 10 more minutes. You're getting all this interaction. And kicked in. And then we ended up then asking more questions. We got a name um, that we couldn't quite understand. We made it out pretty well. And, and he said he, we were asking where he was from. It turns out he was from Ohio. Said he was 20 years old. Said he was a captain. When he said he, when we got the response to Ohio, I said, my grandson and I are from Ohio. And both of our K2 meters went to the top level for about five seconds. They hadn't hardly budged the entire mm. night. Mm-hmm. And our investigator asked, were you hit? And we got this most blood-curdling scream to this day that oh. sends chills down my spine. Like, wow. Yes. Um, that was really the moment that made me decide that I wanted to write a book on the paranormal. I'd been mm-hmm. very reluctant. I tell people it came looking for me. I didn't go looking for it. Mm-hmm. Being a newspaper editor, I was afraid of the reaction. I don't live in a really large community, and my reputation really is my being yes, professionally. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And my coworkers are among the biggest fans telling me, you need to write this, you need to write this. It turned out to be the best career decision I've ever made. The reception has been incredible. The book's been in three printings as soon as going into wow. the fourth. I'm working on a, a sequel to it. Okay. Um, I don't quite yet know the title, but part part of what I want to focus on is mm-hmm. people should not be afraid of the paranormal. They should not be leery of it. They should not be belittle it for sure. I mm-hmm. mean, there are many, many forms of the paranormal um, and what things that maybe we should be looking at uh, I get people's attention. I say, well, my second book, what really, really motivated me to write that is I got a message from a dead Union general. People look at me. I mm-hmm. said, yeah, I read it in the book, the Ohio Official Records of the Civil War. Mm-hmm. And I said, 
that's a message from a dead guy. Why can't they come in other forms? And that gets people to thinking. So, but anyway, you'll have right. to watch for the next book, the current one. I met a ghost at Gettysburg. Um, you can check out more about the book and me at my website. It's a real easy one. I met a ghost.com. www.imetaghost.com. So thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. Please welcome Anna Brandemart to the show. Hello. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? Oh, fine. Good to see you again. Yes, good to see you too. It's been a while. So what brings you to the Farnsworth Paracon? Oh, well, one, I love Gettysburg. And being here, I just try to get my name out there and try to go all over, travel, and basically just working hard and trying to get myself known. So no matter where's a Paracon, I try to go along and be there as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So you are a psychic? Yes. So well, more medium than psychic. Medium than psychic. Um, so can you explain like how your abilities work? Everybody seems to have different ways that the abilities work. Yeah, all mediums are different. We're mm -hmm. not the same. Um, when they look at TV, they think we're all the same because we can all see them. Of course we can all see them, but the way I do it is I can see them. I can describe them if they are male or female. Um, the faces don't appear. I can see shadows, silhouettes. Um, I can describe what they wear. I can describe uh, if they are family, uh, if they're non family, friends, or the spirits that are floating. Um, what happens is once I get started, I get messages, images, um, items. Um, it's like I tell my clients all the time it's like, it's not like playing with a Ouija board, but I use it as an example because their brain is not all there anymore. So they have a very hard time understanding how to put things in words. It's like a missing pieces of a puzzle. So whenever they tell me anything of an item, I tell the client, you recognize of that item, and they will have to say yes or no. So this way I'm on the right track of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm very honest with my answers. If they tell me, okay, well, mom has passed away, but now, see, I can't say mom because they already say it. Mm -hmm. So but I will describe uh, if anybody is around her. If there's a woman, I will describe to her, and if it's right of, of her mom has, she will tell me. Um, also, I will get names and numbers, years, anniversary dates, half of a month or a half of a year. Um, sometimes they will tell me names uh, backwards. Uh, sometimes we will start with last names, or a lot of times if they speak a different language, mm -hmm. especially Italian or Spanish, it makes it very difficult to understand. So I would say, did you have a family that only speak us? Uh, talk Spanish mm -hmm. and they would say yes I know exactly who you're talking about so basically that's how I um, do my mediumship like I said I'm mm -hmm. very honest um, mm -hmm. I tell them um, who's here if they're not here I do not force spirits to be here because that's something that what they want is that's not the way it works they're here they're here that they're not they're not mm -hmm. because if I force them they will get very angry at me and there will be an issue so, right. That's basically how I do things. Wow. So when did you first have your, you know, your first inkling that you had abilities? How old were you? What happened? Well, I have seen a lot of weird and experienced a lot of weird things when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, my aunt showed me some things when um, I was growing up. So the way I found out about my abilities is um, I knew I had something, but I went through classes mm -hmm. and curious of how tarot cards work and psychic protection and all that so I was in a session doing tarot cards and the person that I was practicing on she was like well how did you do that I said I don't know and I just happened to know how to do it very well and then my teacher goes well I don't think you need classes you already have what you have I was saying what are you talking about you have an ability that that nobody else really has. And that's how I found out that I had it all a while, but I found out through a class. So ever since then, um, I took my gift to another level and started delivering messages to people that 
needed to deliver to have messages too. And I wanted mm -hmm. to show people what I could really do. And ever since then, it's been taking off very well. Wow. Now, you mentioned before we started filming that you're starting a radio show? Uh, um, no, I, am, I will be on a paranormal, paranormal talk show in about two weeks, oh, September okay. 28th. Okay. So they uh, asked me to be on there and they want to know things about me and like you right. asking questions and my experiences of being a medium. Wow. Well, thank you for sitting down with us and well, talking. You're quite welcome. Thank you for taking interest and I hope this gets out there for people that need that important message and I want to be there for people who need it. Where can we find out more about you? Do you have a Facebook page or yes, a website right now? Yes, I do have a Facebook page. It's under Psychic Medium. And you will, um, as soon as it comes up, you will see reviews. I have five stars from my clients. Um, my information's on there. My number's on there. So, Is it know. under your name? Uh, or, it's under or, Psychic Medium, but okay. my name is under it as well. Okay. I have two Facebook pages, my main and mm -hmm. my, my Private, business. Yeah. Yes. Business and private kind yep, of thing. They can contact me whenever they need me around. I'm okay. always there for everyone. Well, thank you, Anna. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So thanks for joining me on another paranormal road trip. Until next time, peace out. So in the end, what have I said is only that I'm sure For all I know about this place Is that I call it evermore